Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name's Wyatt, and today I'll be teaching you how to script a keybind door on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is go into the game, and as you'll see, we can walk up to the door, and if we press E, it'll open the door, and we can press E again to close it. Okay, so now that you know what the script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So the first thing that you're going to need is a door model, and you don't have to have these walls on the outside, you just have to have this model right here, and all it consists of is a door, so a part that will go can collide false and transparency will be set to 1 when they open the door, and a primary part that's the same size as the door, and all that primary part does is it holds a GOI, it's a billboard GOI. Uh, and this billboard GOI just has that E right there so that the player knows they can press E to open. Of course, you could grab this, it's in the description of the video, or you can make your own. Just make sure it follows the same structure as I have. Uh, so we have this, awesome. Now what we need to do is create the local script for our door. And inside of this local script, we're going to do a few things. The first thing is we're going to check if the player gets close enough to the door, and if they do, then we're going to set this billboard GOI enabled to true so that they can see, okay, I press E, I can open the door. It's kind of just like a visual reminder that they can press E to open it. Uh, and also what we want to do in here is get when they actually press E, and then we're going to fire a remote event and do some stuff on the server. So I know that sounds a little confusing, but trust me, it'll become simple once we get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll create a local script under starter GUI, and I'm just going to name it door client, but you can name it whatever you'd like. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to get a reference to our local player. So local player equals game dot players dot local player. And this will also give us access to our character, which we'll get later. Uh, and then there are two services that I want to get access to in variables in this script. I want to get access to the run service. So we're going to have like a while true loop type thing. And I also want to have access to the user input service so that we can get when they press a key. So I'll say local run service equals game colon get service run service. And then local user input service, oops, input service equals game colon get service user input service. And after this, I just have a few more variables that I'd like to set up. And these next three are pertaining to the door itself. So of course, if you did change the name of any of these, just make sure you change it in the script as well. But the first one that I'm gonna get a reference to is our door model. So the thing that's the parent of the door in the primary part. So I'll say local door equals game.workspace.door. Uh, and then I also wanna get a reference to our door part. That's the part that will set can collide to false and all that. So we'll say door part equals game dot or we'll say door dot door part, door dot door. And then after this, one more thing, I want to get a reference to this primary part so that we can get that E to open GUI. So I'll say local door primary part equals door dot primary part, just like that. And then after this, we have one more variable and it's not gonna make sense right now, but I'll explain it a little bit later. It's the near door variable. And all this is, is it's a variable Boolean value that will help us know if the player is near the door, so we should show the GUI, or if they're not near the door, so we can't open it. Uh, so after this, we got that. Now what we wanna do, we're gonna do a while true loop type thing, but it's not gonna block up our code cause it's gonna be event based. Um, so we're going to hook into the run service dot render stepped event and this will just run code every few milliseconds. So we'll say run service dot render stepped and I'll connect that up to a function just like that and we don't need to get any arguments in there. Uh, and then in here, this is going to run every few milliseconds going to run really, really, really fast. Uh, we're going to check to see if the player is close to the door. And if they are, then we're going to set this variable to true because they are near the door. And then we'll set this GUI to visible so that the player can actually see, okay, it says E to open door, so I can press E to open the door. So we'll put an if statement. We'll say if player colon distance from character. And all this does is it gets the distance from the player, the magnitude from the player's character to a vector three point. Uh, and the argument is that vector three point. So I'm going to pass in the door primary part dot position. So the distance from the player's torso, humanoid root part, to the door primary part dot position, whatever that is, we want to say if that's less than five, so if they're within five studs of that, then we will set near door to true, because they're near the door, and we'll also display the GUI. So we'll say door prim primary part dot E to open 
dot enabled equals true. And then after this, we're gonna put else in here. We're gonna do something. So if they're not away, if they're not close to the door, if they're not within five studs, if they're 10, 13, 14 studs away, then we'll say near door equals false because they're not near the door. And we'll say door primary part dot e to open dot enabled equals false. And that'll hide that GUI for us. After this, we wanna use the user input service to get whenever the player presses a key. So I'll say user input service Dot input began and I know you could use mouse dot key down for this but that's kind of I think it's deprecated at this point and it's not the best way to do it so I like using user input service dot input began uh, and we're gonna connect that up to a function hook into that and then in here we want to check the user input type so this could be mouse input this could be VR input with like an HTC Vive or something like that we want to make sure that they're actually using keyboard input for us to open this door so we'll say if input, and actually, I'm sorry, we need to get input in here in this function. We need to get our input variable, so the input. Uh, so if input dot user input type, if the type of the input is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard. So if they pressed a key, user input type dot keyboard, if they pressed a key, then We'll say local key equals input dot key code, and this will return an enum dot key code value. And then from here, we can check to see if that key is the specified key that we want the door to open with. So I'll just say if key is equal to enum dot key code dot e, and right here where it says e, you could change that to maybe r or to f or whatever key you want for the player to open the door. Uh, and we're actually going to put another thing in here. We're going to say and. So if they pressed E down, if they pressed E, and they're close to the door, and near door is equal to true, then we're going to open the door. And the way we're going to open the door is by firing a remote event. And I know you're probably thinking, why, why are we firing a remote event? Why don't we just do it in this script? The reason why we're going to do this in a remote event, first of all, it's clean code and it's very much more organized if we do it with a remote event. And also, we need to do this on the server side so it opens for all your players. Maybe if you wanted the door, or it's a single player game and you wanted the door to open for only that player and not come up for the other players, you could do it in here. But we want it to open for all the players in our game, so we're going to do it with a remote event. So I'm going to create a new remote event underneath of the door. I need to got to be under this door uh, unless you want to change the code around a little bit. Uh, so we'll say remote event. And I'm just going to name it toggle door. You can name it whatever you'd like, of course. Toggle door. And then in here, we're going to grab a script, insert that. And this script is what's actually going to catch into when that remote event is fired. So I'll name it toggle door script. Again, you can name it whatever you'd like. Before we go in here, what we want to do is fire this remote event. And it's not going to do anything now, but we're going to write the code. So we'll say door dot toggle door colon fire server. So we'll call the fire server method of that dog toggle door event so that we can catch it in this script. Uh, so the first thing I want to do in the server script is I want to get a reference to our door. So I'll say local door equals script dot parent dot door. And this isn't the door model. This is the door part underneath of it. And I think it's just easier to do it this way. You could do the door model and then do some finicky stuff with the primary part. I just like doing it like this. Um, nice and simple, so we get a reference to that door part right there. Uh, and now I want to get whenever that event is fired, just as we did in here, I want to catch into it, so we're kind of transferring code over to this script. I'll say script.parent.toggledoor.onServer event, and we're going to connect that to a function. And then inside of that function, we don't need any parameters. Uh, we want to check the door transparency, and we're going to toggle it, just as we said. So if the door transparency is zero, then we'll set the door transparency to one to make it invisible, and we'll set can collide to false to make it so you can walk through the door. Otherwise, we'll set the door transparency to zero and set the door can collide to true so that you can't walk through the door and it looks like it's still there. So we'll say exactly that. If door.transparency is equal to zero, then we'll set the transparency to one, and we'll say door.can collide collide equals false uh, otherwise if it's equal to one or if it's equal to something else then we'll say door dot transparency equals zero and then we'll say door dot can collide equals true 
And that's actually all we have to do for this script. It's very simple. I mean, I know it might seem a little complex with the remote events, but the concept behind it is very simple. And of course, you could do some tweening and animating and stuff to make it a little nicer. Um, but yeah, that's it. All we have to do, we can walk up to it, and we can open and close the door. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the paste and link with all the code shown in this video, along with the Roblox model link with all the assets in this video in the description. And I'll see you guys later.